Team now on your Thursday, Democrats kicking off the final day of their convention. And last night was all about the man from Minnesota. Our political correspondent, Molly Martinez, joins us live now from Chicago. Good morning, Molly. So day three, what, what, what are kind of the takeaways from this week so far? Hey, David and Karika, great to see you. Last night, Governor Tim Walz turned this arena into a pep rally, and he was the football coach given the pep talk. There was a lot of football talk last night, including the moment when the actual West Mankato football team that he led to the state championship took hmm. the stage as well. He said that this election is like the fourth quarter. Democrats are down, but they've got possession of the ball, and there's still time left on the clock. He also said that Project 2025, he said, you don't make a play playbook if you don't intend to use it. We also got an idea about where this ticket stands on policy. He mentioned that if elected, he and Kamala Harris would look to lower drug costs and also give a tax break to the middle class. Yeah, Molly, the uh, Democrats uh, brought out some other heavy hitters last night, former President Clinton and Oprah also spoke for a while at uh, at the convention last night. What was that like to hear from Oprah, such a big, massive American personality? Yes, Dave, there was wattage last night on stage in terms of star power. And what was interesting with all of the speakers, not just Oprah, is there's this deviation between what it was the messaging under Biden and what we're now getting under Kamala Harris. Biden, there was a lot of existential dread about democracy and doom and gloom, and you have to vote for us because we're not Donald Trump. But that messaging has really shifted to a more optimistic tone. And almost all of the speakers were trying to paint Kamala Harris as as the candidate of joy and bringing back the good parts of America and that our best days are not behind us, but they are yet to come. All right, Molly. And then as far as protesting goes, has that been like a big headline while you've been there? Is that something that you've seen or experienced? We're pretty insulated here inside the uh, arena, but outside there was a massive protest outside the Israeli consulate. I spoke to one law enforcement who's swinging gates here, and he said that there were multiple arrests during that. So it's a it's a presence here, but also it's sort of eclipsed by the, just the massive law enforcement presence. We're seeing show of force all around the city just so people know that the cops are here and they're in, in a huge quantity. Molly, last thing, obviously this is the biggest day in Kamala Harris's political career. Immense pressure on her to deliver a great speech tonight. Uh, Going to have a massive TV audience watching. Just kind of set the stage for what for her is, is truly, uh, you know, a massive day. Yeah, Dave and Kirika, it's worth remembering that this campaign is really in its nascent stages. It's really only been a month since they were handed the baton, and they've been in a full sprint ever since. So tonight is the culmination of all the momentum of the past month, but also all the momentum of the past four days at this convention. So tonight we're going to hear her autobiography, we're going to hear her resume, we're going to hear about her time as a prosecutor, and we're going to hear what type of leader she plans to be if she's elected. She's going into tonight at a pretty comfortable lead. She's at a three-point lead according to the latest YouGov and a Economist poll, so it's really up to her tonight to stick the landing. Now, David and Kerika, you didn't ask, but I'm going to tell you anyways. Okay. My favorite part of tonight is going to be, I think they're going to be talking inflation on the stage, but I want to talk inflation in the rafters. There are oh. about 10,000 balloons hammocked up here, <laughs> and when this thing's all over, they're coming down, and there's going to be a ball pit, and there's going to be a huge balloon party, mm. and everyone's going to be excited. <laughs> about the balloons and also that this is over and that we don't have to work these crazy hours anymore. I believe yeah, that, no, yep. Mm -hmm. For sure. That, that's the part right and, there. And talk about a sneaky, <laughs> super pressure-filled job, the balloon guy, whoever's in charge yeah. of cutting the balloons loose. Like, the if you missed time, guy. if you missed oh time that, gosh. oh man. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I didn't yeah. even think about that. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Now you give me a whole new anxiety for the day. What if, <laughs> what if they mess up? Oh, my gosh. Right. And what about people who have to Ooh. clean it up? All right. That's what I feel bad for. All right, Molly. Well, As I think always. they're just going to go by with, like, a sharp hairbrush and get everyone at the same time. Got there it. Go. Got it. Go. <laughs> Molly, swat them all away. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Molly. As always, great stuff. <laughs>